Oh, hey, I'm Chad of Chad's Beer Reviews, and this is the top 10 worst beers that I had of, in 2023. Although worse is like pretty harsh because I don't really drink like bad, terrible beer anymore. Uh, let's, we should really call this like the top 10 most disappointing beers. Really only like two of the beers on this, on this list were really bad. Everything else was just disappointing and underwhelming. So hopefully the video will not be. I will see you guys at the end. Cheers. 26 Degree Brewing Company, Bourbon Barrel Age, Zico's Rage, 9.2 ABV. Not quite as dark as Bourbon County or Marshall Zukov, but you know, pretty dark black. It's like such a rich, intense smell. Like if you took black licorice and like compressed it down to some kind of concentrate or something. Hopefully it tastes as good as it smells. Cheers. It does have a little bit of a fusel alcohol to it. The Bourbon Barrel character is definitely pretty prominent down here. In fact, I think it's kind of overriding the base brew. It's very boozy, uh, has a very woody character. It does not taste nearly as sweet as it smells. So this kind of reminds me of like one of those Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Age uh, brand, All Tech Brewing or whatever it's called. It seems kind of weak. I hate to say it. Like even the mouthfeel on here, it seems like much lighter than it should be. It really didn't gain anything from the barrel aging, I hate to say. I think this is like three, maybe three and a quarter. Brewery Amagang All Hallows Treat Imperial Chocolate Peanut Butter Stout. I mean, it looks black, but it's actually just really dark brown. It smells as advertised. It smells like a uh, Reese's Pieces. Big in, cheers. Okay. Dr. Pepper kind of flavor. Chocolate and peanut butter, but it's actually not that rich. Uh -uh. Artificial flavor. Like yeah. A, like a soda. Yes. It's funny, like the it. first sip or two was like really good, and like each sip that I take, I'm liking it a little less. Less? <laughs> the mouthfeel on here is very thin. It is light. It feels like it's lost something. Like, Nowhere you know, it's carbonated. It's almost like a chocolate peanut butter soda. Very soda-like. All the flavors faded pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, now it feels like I'm drinking soda. Yeah, a little disappointing. Three, maybe three and a quarter out of five. I would say three as well. Clown Shoes, Pumpkin Sombrero, Mexican style chocolate style with pumpkin puree. 7% ABV. I mean, it definitely looks dark brown, slight ruby mahogany highlights. It might probably looks black on camera. It's really not that aromatic in general. Yeah, a little pumpkin, a little chocolate. That's pretty much it. Hopefully it tastes better than it smells. Cheers. All right, well, it does taste a little bit better than it smells, but not by a whole lot. <laughs> Actually, not even like a stout, more like almost like a, a dark lager of some sort. I just really, I don't get roasty malt on here at all. Faint little bit of chocolate. I don't really like taste pepper, but I get like a, a little bit of warmth in my throat as it finishes. Not like a super pumpkin forward beer. But then I'm like halfway through it. That pepper character is completely gone. So I'd probably call it like medium body. Carbonation is probably about medium as well. I just thought this was gonna be great. And this is only okay. Probably give this three, maybe 2.75. Mechafin barley wine, 10.2 ABB. Old Irvine Brewing Company out of Chicago for a barley wine? This is very dark. I mean, look at that. That's like a brown ale. Yeah, this is a real clean, easy to smell nose. To me, it does not smell like a barley wine. Well, it tastes like one. Let's find out. Cheers. It definitely tastes like something in the barley wine family. Toffee and caramel. Oddly enough, it is not that sweet. Hops are really, really lacking on this one. I hate to say it, it tastes like kind of like a half-assed barley wine. It's lacking like the, the yeast character, and it's lacking the toast or roast, the overt sweetness of like a brown ale. It doesn't taste particularly good. There's nothing really special about it. Full-bodied, yes, chewy, fairly low carbonation, so it's, you know, borderline syrupy. If I was doing this BJCP specs, this would be like mid to high 20s like my own personal score like on untapped i'd probably give it like 2.75 Embers Mexican Chocolate Porter from Pay It Brewing Company, 6% ABV. Pretty standard brown color, fairly clear. Actually, it kind of smells like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. No, I really don't get peppers. Let's see if they did it with this one. Cheers. Definitely taste the cinnamon. Almost cereal kind of flavor. I don't really taste the pepper, but I definitely feel the pepper. But yeah, this is a little one-dimensional. Pretty much all I'm tasting is cinnamon. I really don't get chocolate. Like all cinnamon, slightly sweet, strong, burning sensation in the throat afterwards. The body on here is actually quite thin. The carbonation strikes me as being a little low too. Actually a little disappointed in this beer. It's very simplistic. It's not really delivering as advertised. I think it's like a three out of five, maybe 2.75. La 
clawfoot bathtub, gingerbread truffle, fifth frame brewing company, pastry shop with gingerbread houses, chocolate and spices. And it's not even forming a head. I'm pouring it like straight down the middle. Kind of an odd smell to this. It doesn't really smell like a Christmas beer. Honestly, it has kind of like a skunky kind of smell to it. I have no idea what we're in for here, so cheers. Impression of chocolate, but without like the actual taste of chocolate. I think there's like kind of like a minty taste here. Oddly enough, it is not really sweet. For a pastry style, usually they're very, very sweet. It does not taste like gingerbread. This one to me seems like kind of confused. Yeah, it's a big, thick, sticky body next to no carbonation. It says a pretty cloying beer with all those additives in there. I'm not a fan, just not doing a lot for me. It's somewhere between like four and six. Bavic Super Wit, 5% ABV, a pale goldish white. I don't know, the, the aroma on this is pretty low, not much to go on, so hopefully there's more in the taste. Cheers. Slight bit skunky, very mild, very kind of generic. It doesn't really have like a whole lot of flavor. The orange is really subtle. The coriander is so subtle that I can't even pick it up. So like medium light body, moderately low carbonation. I will say it's smooth. It's actually kind of refreshing, even though there's a whole lot of flavor here. I mean, this beer is bad. It's just that it's really boring. The Belgian equivalent of like Blue Moon or something like that. I just had Blue Moon last night and it was like way more flavorful than this. Oh, this is pretty lame. I might go like two and a half out of five on this one. Holy mackerel special Belgian style golden ale. They're calling it a golden ale and that is more of a orange. I can tell this is old. <laughs> it smells like caramel, butterscotch. To me, it smells almost more like a, like a Dunkelweizen or like a Weizenbach. I'm not really impressed off the nose. Let's dive in, cheers. That is like the sweetest Belgian beer I can ever recall. I don't see a year, I don't see a bottling date. I don't see anything on here. I don't know what's going on with this beer. Th some of those Belgian phenols, it's a little spicy, a little clove or uh, ginger. They're saying you can drink this old, fine by me. This is not what I would consider a Belgian golden ale. The style guidelines, it is not even close, like, like 20 to 25. I think it's lost a little CO2 over the year or years. Kind of lame. Um, probably, I'll probably give it like two and a half. Brasserie, De Rank, Pierre Noel. 7% ABV. Yeah, I would say, yeah, it is amber. Maybe a little bit brown. When I was pouring it, I could smell that it was quite skunky. With spicy continental hop aroma, but also I would say it's quite floral. Let's give this one a try. Cheers. Slightly kind of like spoiled kind of flavor. I mean, as far as I know, this is a fresh bottle. Something wrong with the yeast there. Butric acid or something? Lager kind of flavor to it? Maybe even medium light mouthfeel and probably maybe just straight up high carbonation. Seems some kind of off, off flavor. I'm really not a fan of this. One of the best bottle caps of all time, I will say. Yeah, not a fan. Like, I think like two and a half C minus kind of range. I didn't like it seven years ago and uh, I don't like it now either. From Pin Springs Ale Works out of Tampa, Brondo, the Thirst Mutilator. Now this is from the movie uh, Idiocracy. St. Patrick's Day, green, greenish bluish head. It doesn't smell lemon or lime to me. It's definitely artificial in a sports drink way. All right, cheers. cheers. Gotta like it. Oh, it does not taste like lemon or lime or any real fruit. I can't even describe what it tastes like. I get the sour, I don't get, but I don't get Gatorade. No, I don't either. I mean, it almost tastes like canned green beans or peas or something. It's almost like a, like orange juice gone bad. I do not like this at all. One of the worst beers I've had, yeah. one out of five. I'll give it a two I'm out of five. Probably not even gonna finish it. One extra point just for the, the label of the yeah. marketing. To me, to me, it's just kind of gross. I don't get it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. This is the first time I did a worst beers review list since 2016. So it's been like seven years. Hope this was a nice treat. By the way, it's your first time here. Welcome. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. So can please consider following and subscribing. Um, if you want to see the top 10 best beers, I'm sure it's right here or right here. And other previous years, best and worst lists, I'm sure are around here somewhere. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys for the next review. Cheers.